let's do this. It's the night before a big launch. Just put my kid to sleep. Um, so we're going to build the Aerotech L1090 White Lightning. Um, it's pretty much the biggest 54 millimeter motor you can buy in terms of total impost. I'm pretty sure. Um, so it goes in the 54 2800 case. Um, <laughs> the case is actually so big, I didn't realize my rocket was two and a half inches too short, so I just had to extend my rocket uh, today to make this fit. All right, so you open it up, you're gonna get a cover for your nozzle, your delay kit, which interestingly enough, this is a, you know, the dash PS means it's plugged and smoked, meaning there's a smoke grain so you can track it as after burnout. Um, it's not supposed to have an ejection charge. It comes with one, don't use it. Um, Cause further down they do clarify that, you know, delay time it's plugged. It's supposed to be a plug motor. Um, and you get a bunch of O-rings. So your seal disc, your absent four closure O-rings and then a grain spacer or for each grain. And then this, oh, forgot I had already opened this. So we get to see each individual grain now. This is your liner, your phenolic liner. Interestingly enough, it comes with another cover. Ignore that cat. Uh, so that's the loud end. Um, so the first set of directions are actually for you that delay grain, or in this case, it's a smoke grain. Um, don't stress about following them too hard because this is like pretty much comes assembled. So there's like the, um, whatever you want to call that, ejection seal disc or something. There's an O-ring. The delay grain is already in this delay, delay, <laughs> delay grain spacer. So it's, it's pretty much already assembled. You can just shove it in there like this. I'm gonna take some super lube. Do the circumference of this. You could even do the end because this one's plugged, but you don't want to do that if you're gonna have an actual delay grain. Um, because this lube can affect the burning of the delay grain. Meaning like if you were to get lube here and here, it may not burn, right? And if you were relying on that for the timing of your ejection charge, that would be really bad. Um, this is just to help me track this. So that's your neoprene washer. Then we're going to put a little bit of lube down in that touch hole there. Yeah, so O-ring end goes in first. Um, it's gonna be pretty tight. That's gonna be flush. So see how it sticks up a bit? That's actually because there's like an air pocket trapped in the end there. Um, so you just keep pushing in until you work all that air out. Now's the point you might as well lube the threads on your closures. Helps with this assembly. Cool. Yeah, so that forward seal disc can push that delay grain flush in there. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's talk about these O rings. Two big ones for each closure. Save one small one for your um, forward seal disc, um, which right now I'm just going to lube out the front of this. Try to keep it from getting too charred. These guys, so your seal disc o ring and your closure o rings get a very light layer. The lube doesn't help like seal them. It just makes sure that when they're sliding down the casing that they don't get bunched up or 
twisted. Um, so like that's the purpose of a lube on the O-rings really. It's not like more lube on it is going to make it seal better or anything like that. Um, cool. And then, so we've got one, two, three, four, five motor grains. That's four spaces. And you can see we've got four delay grain spacers. So remember these went in like this. So I'm going to put them back in that way with an O-ring in between them. And basically what this is doing is making a little tiny space in between each grain so you can make sure that each end of it ignites at the same time the core does. That's how these base grains are designed to, to fire. One thing I'm going to do that the directions don't really mention is I want to mark the length that this igniter needs to go in there to get to the top grain there. This way when you're at the rail and you're fishing this up into your rocket, um, you don't have to guess if you've pushed it in far enough because you want it right at that top grain essentially. Um, if you ignite in the middle, um, bad things are going to happen. So what you can do is put your nozzle in. Go ahead and feed that igniter up in there. marker which I don't have. Once you get to this mark you're good and if this mark is a couple inches outside the rocket you know you're not at the top of your first grain. We'll set that aside for later. All right tiny o-ring forward seal disc put that in there and then that goes right into your liner. Cool, so I'm just making sure that that seal disc is still all the way down on the liner and that O-ring isn't pinched, the little one. And then your big O-ring for your forward seal goes in. And then you install this forward closure, which already has your delay green, or in this case, your smoke green in there. And this gets threaded all the way in. Um, it's my understanding that when this ignites, the pressure at the front of the case is actually greater than the rear, which I guess makes sense since there's an opening at the rear of your nozzle. Um, so you want all the threads up here. Nozzle first. Then O-ring. Then rear closure. And if we've done this right, we should have like, I think it's a less than an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Oh my. Cool. I'll put the calipers on and tell you exactly what I have, but it is 0.77. So it's a little over a sixteenth. Yeah. <sighs> 0.76 and that is an Aerotech 542800 case with a plug closure. This is the um, L1090 white lighting. Um, sounds like there's some room for the grades to move around but that's fine. Um, yeah.
Easy as that. Stick your igniter in the loud end, hit the button, and hopefully something cool happens.